spring has sprung, the grass is riz. I wonder where dem birdies is. Is that right? Something like that? Anyway, it's back by popular demand. Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, I appreciate it's not spring everywhere in the world, but here in the UK, things are just beginning to look a little bit more optimistic. So to get you in the mood, here's 10 seconds of our garden filmed only this morning. So what have I got for you lovely people today? Well, we're gonna have a go at this little country spring lane. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Before we start, um, a question that pops up regularly in the comments section is, what angle do I like to paint at? And do I like to work flat? Now my first thought was, no, I like to work sitting down in a chair. But then I realized what was meant. So yes, I do like to have a slight angle of about 15 degrees, which helps to get a little movement. But I do also take my board along the bottom and tilt it when I want the colors to run down. I'll also pick up my board and move it around, especially when I want streaky skies. Okay, today's material. My paper is some Bockingford Rough, but any decent watercolour paper will do. My paints are my normal three primaries, Cobalt Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Yellow. I have some Yellow Ochre, Payne's Grey, Sap Green, and some Burnt Umber. Who's eating the hot cross buns? My brushes are my three quarter inch flat, number 12 round, a mop and my trusty number three rigger. And there's no drawing template today as this one is nice and simple. To start with, I'm just using some cadmium yellow and my number 12 brush and simply dropping in some blobs to suggest the daffodils. Now let this dry and then with my large mop I'm wetting with clean water the whole of the paper. And don't worry if some of the yellow begins to bleed. Now for a short lesson on mixing greens. Now I would very rarely use any greens straight from the tube or pan as they always look more natural and more harmonious if they are mixed from the primaries that you're using. So to start with, get the water to paint ratio right. Usually I have slightly more water than paint. It's just a rough guide of about 60% water, 40% paint. And here I'm just mixing some cadmium yellow. Now for a very bright yellowy green, I'm just adding in a smaller amount of cobalt blue. Now add in a little more, so it's about a 50-50 mix of each for this mid-green. Now if you want a really strong green, I'll put in more blue and sometimes add in a touch of alizarin crimson, which will give the colour a much more earthy, olivey colour. Now if I want to give my greens a bit of a kick, a bit of a lift, then a tube green I do use is either a sap or hooker's green and I'll drop that into the mix. So off we go. With my paper still soaking I'm throwing in these random green mixes into the wet paper, making sure I leave an area of light in the centre. Here I'm just adding in some yellow ochre for the lane. Now please use whatever greens you like, but try and get a variety of blue greens and yellow greens. You have to work quite quickly as all of this is done still wet and wet. Now 
and I'm painting around the areas where the daffodils are. Here I'm adding in some burnt umber just to get some more warmer tones. And this here is a little bit of Payne's Grey. Now splatting in some darker greens. And this is a way of not only getting this nice random texture, but it's also good for getting colour into a wash without disturbing the paint with your brush. A little burnt umber into the lane here and again it's still moving because it's still wet. Now this is a mix of burnt umber and Payne's Grey and in with my number 12 brush for the large trunks. And now with my trusty rigger. And here with a tissue, I'm just dabbing out to make sure I keep that area of light in the center. Next for some dark shadows with some Payne's Grey, all very loose and quick. Splatting in some more dark. And I'm giving a quick spray to make sure we keep things moving. Here I'm just dropping in a few clean water blobs to try and force a few back runs. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a glass of old rosy cloudy cider. I'd have a hot cross bun too, but apparently they're all gone. Next I'm using the dry brush technique by keeping the brush flat to the paper and using its texture to create this lovely broken painterly feel. Next I'm re-wetting but not saturating this tree area, then with my rigger adding in a few loose branches. I just love the springiness of the rigger for this purpose.
Now with my number 12 brush loaded up with burnt umber, I'm giving the foreground some directional splats. And then dabbing out any areas which are too prominent. And just a few more little splats here. Now with some watery dark green, I'm running some shadows down the bank, but stopping at the lane. And now for some watery burnt umber running across the lane. And this always looks more natural than running a grey colour right across both. Here just a little dabbing with a tissue. This is always a favourite technique of mine, using a damp tissue or piece of kitchen roll and just softening and blending some of these hard edges. Now it's pastel pencil time and I'm using a yellow ochre colour here and drawing in the fence posts. Now I could have masked out this area, but it's so much easier doing it this way. Now a little white for some highlights. Now I've been asked if this means your painting now becomes a mixed media piece. Now I'm not really one for labeling things, but for me, if in essence it still looks like a watercolour, then that's what it is. But perhaps if you don't want the watercolour please after you, then maybe you can call it mixed media. Now here I'm going to be using my Sennelier Soft Pastels, which are just great for adding in highlights and they just blend beautifully. And now we can really bring out the colour of the daffodils by just simple dots and blobs. And here with my pastel pencil, a black, just to add a few shadows in the trees. Can't resist a few more splats. And some more rigid details in the trees. Painting in a few shadows with Payne's Grey. And as ever, we're in danger of overworking it, so let's call it a day. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and you'll give it a go. 
Now coming up in a moment are several paintings that I've done over the years with the Springfield, so check those out. But before that, I would just like to say a great big thanks to all of you who've joined the Facebook group and have been posting their paintings. It really has been a delight to have a look at all your paintings. I've enjoyed every one. So if you want to join, the link is down in the description. And again, please don't forget to do all the normals, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. So take care and cheers. <laughs>